noticed when I was cooking that I was setting aside the scraps from the vegetables in a bowl. And I do that because even though we don't yet compost here, um, we don't have our worm compost up here, we haven't started a compost pile yet, we have been collecting our scraps and I throw them in the woods because I just figure it's better than putting them in a trash bag and sending them to the landfill. And we actually don't have trash pickup here at the farm. So we have to haul everything into town, which really makes you reevaluate like what you're using and what you're disposing of. So we definitely are trying to make use of our kitchen scraps right now and I guess feed the animals and feed the forest. Um, and then anything that's like paper, cardboard, the cardboard that we're not saving to use for the garden spaces, we are we burn it. We have a burn barrel out back. And then recyclables, we've actually been taking back to Florida or taking to the dump to recycle and as well as everything else. And it's kind of cool because they have like all these different bays where you drop off your different materials. So if you have wood, if you have metal, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's been a new experience, but I do kind of like it because again, it makes you be really like thoughtful about what you're using and what you're throwing away. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. And then what I'm cooking is a Hungarian goulash. I've never made it before, but it's super simple. It's got onions, parsnips, carrots, beef, and potatoes. And then the seasonings are garlic, salt, paprika. I added some chili powder, which isn't traditionally in goulash, but I just felt like adding chili powder because we like a little bit of a kick. And then we'll probably put some hot sauce in it later, some of our homemade hot sauce from our garden grown peppers. Um, so yeah, it's really simple. It's gonna simmer for a couple hours, get the meat really tender and the veggies nice and tender. And then we're gonna enjoy it because it has been cold up here. The weather is definitely chilly. We're, you know, in the 30s, 20s, 20s, 30s at night, I believe right now. Um, so definitely cold. It's chilly out during the day in the 40s for us. So we definitely wanted some warming food and I wanted to make some soup. So I'm doing the goulash today. And then tomorrow, what am I making tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm doing cast iron skillet chicken pot pie. And I'm super excited. That's gonna be so yummy. So yeah. We're gonna take you guys along and show you everything that we're doing while we're up here. We're only here for a few days again, but we've got some exciting stuff going on. Come here, guys. Come here, stay over here. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to dig up the few Dahlia tubers that I have and overwinter them in, inside. So, I didn't get any production off them. I planted them really late this past year. But what I'm gonna do is just dig up the tubers and save those and plant them on time correctly next year. So there's a tuber. Here we have another tuber. There's another one. We go. There's another one down here. Here's the Dahlia tuber that I planted over here. I don't know. That one's a mystery. All right, so not bad. We have one missing tuber. I can't seem to find it, but that's okay. I got all the other ones, and now I need to prune the grapevines. It's the first time I'll be doing this, um, so I did some research online, and we're just gonna give it a go. So from what I've read, you want to prune the grapevine. No, 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 Dozer. <sighs> Dozer was just trying to take. No, no, buddy. No, that's not a stick for you. So. <laughs> Do you see right here? No dose, nobody. And the grapevine is coming up and down and Dozer was just trying to grab it and pull it away for his own stick. <laughs> the dogs love it out here. Okay, so what I'm supposed to do is prune each one down to one main horizontal leader and get all of the excess branches off. 
So let's see if I can show you here. So we've got this one vine here, and then I want to trim it to one horizontal leader because grapes only grow on the new growth. Um, so I really need to prune a lot of this back. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so my camera died, but I did keep working and I was gonna go in and get another battery so you could see the whole process, but <laughs> honestly, it was a little frustrating because for one, I'm new at this and I get a little bit frustrated if I don't really know what I'm doing. And for two, the loppers that I'm using, the like pruners, they're not super great. They're brand new, but they're not great, especially for, I guess, for just what I'm doing. So I was struggling a bit and I figured I won't let you guys watch me or I won't have you guys watch me struggle like that the entire time. So I got it all done and it looks amazing. So that pile right there is all the grapevines that I took off. And now you can see how clean and beautiful it looks and how each one only really has one main leader other than this guy right here so this one right here is really substantial and it's got two that come up from the main stem so it's got two it splits off so i did leave that leader to go on its own and then the other stem right here i left that and i actually left two leaders i left one that's going that way and then this one it actually came up and grew around and is also going that way. So I love both of them and I don't know if that's right or wrong or doesn't really make a difference, but I did leave both of them and we'll just kind of see how it does in the spring, but it was definitely challenging. The grapevines were a disaster and I don't know if it's like that every year. I don't know if it's like that because the previous owner wasn't um, pruning them at the end of the season. I'm not really sure. So we'll just have to see what it looks like next season at the end of the season, next year at the end of the season and go from there. But we do need to do a little bit more. We need to fix these up on here a little bit better. And then we need to do some maintenance on the T posts, mostly the one down here. Well, this one, this one here is not even attached anymore. And as you can see, this one here is no longer attached either. So we definitely we definitely need to do some maintenance on that. And we'll probably do that tomorrow. We just need to get, um, I don't know if we have any more T-post clips. We might have T-post clips and then I can just do it today. But y'all, I'm distracted. Look at how beautiful these fall colors are. Check out these trees. Like, how gorgeous is that? I'm obsessed. So pretty. So I got the Dahlia tubers dug, I got the grapevines done, and I have such a grateful heart and I am so happy because the past few times that we've been here, it has been rainy and we haven't been able to do anything outside because it's not like, like a sprinkle or just light rain. It's been torrential downpour for almost the whole day. And as I've said before, we have clay soil. It's never been worked and you cannot till or be working with clay soil you can't be digging in it it just like clumps together when it's wet so there hasn't been a lot that i could do there is one more thing that i really want to get done outside while we're here and that is to plant our tulips for ne next season they'll come up in the spring so i'm really hopeful that i can get that done um if not today tomorrow but i wanted to show you my dahlia tubers up close so these are what they look like and I need to do some research and see how I go about storing them. But I am very, very happy. I did not get dahlias this year. And like I said, I planted the tubers late um, and that's okay. My goal with planting them was to at least keep them viable and have them grow more tuber pieces so I can get 
more dahlias next year. So I'm super, super excited. I'm very happy. I'm grateful for what I got. I'm very grateful for what I've gotten done here so far. Jose's been working inside on the laundry room and then just some other projects. So I'll take you in there and show you what he's been doing. my tubers in here until I figure out what to do with them. Let's take a look at the Hungarian goulash. Looking good, it is ready. So we're gonna eat that with some rye bread because that's what the recipe said to do. Babe, what do you got going on in here? Not much, it's good to touch up. And doing some final paint, some things that are bugging me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, some of the the drywall that I didn't sand well, I'm just going to go back, sand it, finish touching up, and do final paint. Then we're all good. Looks awesome. So, if you did not see the previous post, this is our renovated laundry room. It all looked nasty before. Yeah. And that. What is it called? Like paneling. That, yeah, that quarter inch or eighth inch paneling, wood paneling that was like from the 80s or the 70s yeah. actually. It was like oh. yellowed. Yeah. And, oh. and it had two layers of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we mentioned it before, but we had a leak on the main water line and it was leaking underneath this laundry room. You know, so humid in here, those panel boards were all warped. We came in here and just did a complete overall. Yeah, when we came in here, the panel boards were like wavy. <laughs> it was so wild. And I also did upgrade the, pe the old electrical panel and put in a newer one. Yep. So. A lot of work, but it has been so worth it. Yeah. I need to come back and you can see the color difference. I need to do a second coat on that to make it nice and white like the rest of the trim. I actually reused the trim that we had here. Mm -hmm. And it was like the old wood stain yeah you know so it takes a couple coats to get that it's a dark wood trim and so it takes a couple coats to get that off there yeah we reuse the door trim as well on both doors uh the only new trim we added was the baseboard and the the ceiling and actually the side on the uh yeah the, the corners are the new corners of the ship lap yeah. and this was the cheapest ship lap i could get so you know, it has some character. It wasn't yeah. like perfectly cut or anything like that. Yeah, so it's got. And I think that's the look we wanted to go for. Yeah, right? it's got. Some, yeah, it's got some knots in there, but it's rustic, so I definitely like it. And then under, under here is our washer and dryer, our beautiful washer and dryer. Yeah, we'll show you when it's all done, so you can see how it looks. Yeah. Completely painted. Yeah, because there's some more things we want to do in here once it's all finished out. We want to add some shelves and like a a butcher block countertop for me to fold on, and I would like a, a hanging bar so I can hang clothes in here, um, things that we want to dry, to hang dry. And our washer and dryer is amazing. We gifted ourselves with a, a new set. Fun fact, Jose and I have a really old washer and dryer that was gifted to us that we are very grateful for in the Florida house but we decided to treat ourselves and get a new hey baby, it's beautiful been working set. for years. Yes, I mean, they're old, but they work and they were free and free is for me. <laughs> so, but we decided to, to treat ourselves for the home here and then we can leave that set at the Florida home.